Well, and has everybody recovered from last night? Because that was quite an event, wasn't it? Uh, my voice has literally just recovered. Uh, my back, my neck, everything is in agony, but I don't care. I wouldn't have missed that for the world, to be honest. Uh, it was an incredible game, an incredible atmosphere. Uh, but we've got a good show for you today. Um, we'll be talking about how far we can go in the Champions League. A former Newcastle United player has uh, given his prediction, and it is quite interesting. Uh, also, French media have done their Newcastle United player ratings, and to say they will shock you is an understatement. Uh, also, Fabian Cher, he's in the team of the week. Uh, we'll talk about the horrible scenes uh, with the Ultras walking up to St. James's Park before the game uh, yesterday. Uh, and on a lighter note, uh, Eddie Howe and Kieran Trippier up for awards. So let's dive in. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tune Review YouTube channel. My name is Paul, thank you so much uh, for watching the show. Uh, as usual, if you do enjoy the show, please do give it the thumbs up. Keep us up there in the YouTube search results. Uh, and as you can see, we are very, very close to 24,000 subscribers. So if you are new and you like what you see, please subscribe. Come and be part of this brilliant community here on the Tune Review. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, which will uh, let you know when we schedule our live shows or we upload shows such as this one. So thank you very much in advance for that. Right, we will start off with how far can we go in the Champions League? This is a big question now that has been asked by a lot of pundits after the performance against PSG last night. There was a lot of criticism came our way after the uh, Milan games as oh, we were embarrassing, we, we should have been drubbed. Fact is, we weren't drubbed. They didn't score and we could have nicked it at the end. But a Champions League point away from home is is just very, very crucial. And then to go and do what we did to PSG last night was even more sensational, in my opinion. It was just incredible. Uh, so we're now in four points. We lead the group. Uh, now, former Newcastle United player Didi Haman has uh, been interviewed this morning. And he's actually come out and said that Newcastle United, he could see them making the semi-finals of the Champions League. I mean, that's a, an extremely bold statement to make, in my opinion. Um, do I think we can make the Champions League semi-finals? I don't think so. If I'm being openly honest, you know, I have to be honest here as a, as a, as a, as a general football fan, not just a, a Newcastle United fan. Don't get me wrong. If we made the Champions League semi-finals, it would be an incredible achievement. I'd love every single second of it. Uh, but, you know, there's some massive teams in this Champions League. And are we at that level yet? Uh, yes, we've just drubbed Paris Saint-Germain, but look, Paris Saint-Germain are what they are. You know, there's there's big, big, big fish in this Champions League. Uh, but look, knockout stages, if we can get to the knockout stages, we know that anything can happen. We can play very, really well away from home. We can set our shop up and not to concede goals. And then at home, the world's our oyster at home at the minute. The form is just incredibly good. So, you know, you, you never know, do you? I mean, look, Didi Haman, he knows the area, he knows the fans, he knows what this club is all about. But, you know, to, to make a statement saying we're going to make this, the semi-finals of the Champions League is quite incredible. Uh, I would love it, don't get me wrong. Uh, but let me know in the comments, do you think we can actually make the Champions League semi-finals after what you witnessed last night? Or do you think, you know, maybe just getting out of the group is an achievement for Newcastle, where we are as a club at the minute. But... Once the knockout stages, you know, kick in, we know that anything can happen from then on. So uh, let me know. Um, but Didi Haman is pretty confident that we're going to make the semifinals. Now, this next story is certainly going to make you laugh uh, and also quite angry, I think. Uh, French Football News, which is a, a media outlet over there in France, haven't scored any Newcastle United players above a seven for last night's performance. Can you actually believe that? Not above a seven. Uh, I'm astounded by it, quite honestly. And... A little bit angry because, again, we're not getting the credit that we deserve in certain aspects of the media. But this is obviously in France. Uh, they're very bitter. They're very hurt by what happened last night. Um, so, it, you know, it is laughable. Tonali, they scored a five. A five. Nick Pope, I think, got a six. Um, I mean, Nick Pope didn't really have big saves to make in the game. He, d he did okay, in my opinion. But, you know, as I say, we've got a, re a review show tonight at 7 o'clock. If you're watching this on Thursday afternoon, don't miss that because it's going to be a cracker of a show. Uh, an absolute belter. 7 o'clock live. Uh, so we'll do our play ratings then. But I find it astounding. I really do. I, I don't know who could vote Lascelles a 7. 
I don't know who could vote Gordon a seven, Miggy a seven, Bruno a seven. You know, Bruno was absolutely incredible. Cher and Lascelles were absolutely monstrously good yesterday. And they're voting them a seven, which I find is absolutely hilarious. But I'm a little bit uh, pissed off with it, if, if I'm honest. You know what I mean? It's just like when you're reading it and you see... How dare you? How dare you score our players so low when we were absolutely brilliant? Yes, PSG had possession. That It doesn't count for nothing. You know, they, they knocked it around in their own half most of the time. The, 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 yes, second half, they came at us a little bit, but we were always comfortable in the game. And it was really, really laughable to read that this morning. It really was. I mean... You know, we deserve some respect. Even from the opposition media, we deserve some respect. And all I'm reading from the French media this morning is how much they're looking forward to revenge at the Parc de France and all of this kind of crap. You know, it, it's 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 shameful. It really is. But as I say, you'll get the proper player ratings from us tonight live on the show. So uh, don't miss that at 7 o'clock, guys. Fabian Scher. The man who cost three and a half million pounds for Newcastle United has been included in the who scored Champions League team of the week. And he's up there in there with some fabulous, fabulous players. And it's a massive congratulations to Fabian because, look, he's had to do a, a big job because obviously Lascelles coming in. They haven't played a lot together lately, uh, but they've been brilliant together. If you ask me, those two should have been in the team of the week. Lascelles was outstanding last night. Uh, it's just incredible. He looked like a a man possessed. He looked like a completely different footballer. You know, from the championship to the Champions League is an incredible story, as it is for quite a few Newcastle United players. But Fabian Scher himself, you know, he was just monumentally good last night. And, and then to top it off the way he did with that goal. You know, it, it's, it's good enough winning a tackle like he did. But then to go and play a 1-2 with Miggy and then slam it in the top bins like that is just incredible. And, you know, we know he's capable of doing that. We've seen it many, many times before. But this is next level. This is the Champions League. This is against Paris Saint-Germain. And you know what? He was just outstanding. Everybody was. Um, and I'm just delighted for him because, you know, people look at Fabian Shea and you think, well, you know, he was he was out of favour for so long under ridiculously bad manager, you know, who said he wasn't he couldn't play in the back four for one. Uh, however, he's, he's he's just going to put that right. Every single thing he does on the pitch now, he can quite comfortably play in the back four. There is no doubt about it. But what I love about Fabian is the way he steps up and reads the game. You know, sometimes he'll get it wrong and sometimes his passes will go awry. But look, nine out of ten times, he does things absolutely correctly and absolutely brilliantly. And he did it again last night. He was just world-class last night. There was no doubt about it. You know, whatever came his way, he dealt with it. So did Lascelles. So I'm a little disappointed in a way that Lascelles isn't in that team of the week. But obviously, you know, these guys have got to pick players from different teams. But, you know, normally we'd see a couple of guys in from, you know, Man City or whoever it may be, Liverpool, etc. in the past. Uh, so I'm disappointed Lascelles not there, but a massive well done uh, to Fabian Scher because once again, he was just sensational last night. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about Fabian's performance. Now, when I went into the ground last night, I went in quite early, uh, about 15, 20 minutes before the warm-up started, and uh, the PSG fans were already in and making a hell of a noise, uh, which was uh, incredible. They were brilliant in the ground. You know, the, the the drums, and they had like a conductor leading the singing. It was just, and they were really loud, and, and you thought, yeah, this is what Champions League is all about. This is what it's, it's really all about, you know, their ultras coming in, singing and banging drums and creating a hell of an atmosphere. Um, but what I've seen this morning uh, when they were making the way to the ground, quite ugly scenes, you know, bottles being thrown and um, clashes with, uh, with with police officers, police asking Newcastle fans to move on and stuff like that. It, it, it's not nice to see that kind of thing. Now, yes, when you've got things like that happening and, and the ultras there, walking up to the ground in such a big group, you're always going to get a little bit of a fan clash, aren't you? But, you know, it has to be within reason. And some of the scenes were, were really ugly. You know, punches being thrown and um, absolute horrid abuse being um, sent both ways. You know, I'm not saying Newcastle United fans were completely innocent in this, but, you know, it, it's clear that when you see that group and... You know, yes, the police expected that to happen. They expected the ultras to, you know, march up to the ground, uh, as a lot of European teams do when they're away from home. A lot of fans do that. You know, so it, w it wasn't to be unexpected. 
but the the police kind of, from what I could see, kind of give them leeway um, more than what they did the Newcastle fans. It was it was instantly that the Newcastle fans were being filmed by the police and and things like that, but none of the PSG fans were. It was it was a very strange thing to watch. Um, but look. I bumped into a couple of uh, PSG fans on the way back to the car last night and uh, they were very, very friendly and uh, actually said, well done. Um, And that was really nice. And and as I say, in the ground, it was that kind of atmosphere that you want to see and hear. You know, you want the ultras banging on the drums and screaming and then we respond with our songs and things like that. So uh, it was it was an incredible atmosphere in the ground, but it, it was just very, very disappointing to see uh, the videos that I've seen uh, when I got home last night and then again this morning, what I've seen. It, you know, those kind of things don't need to happen, but you're always going to get it when fans clash. I know that, but guys, it's football. You know what I mean? Let's just enjoy the occasion. Let's welcome Paris Saint-Germain fans or Dortmund or Milan to the to the city and let them have the march up to the ground. I just don't think the abuse needed to go both ways. It's uh, it, it's it leaves a sour taste, especially when you know the atmosphere was so good in the ground. I know you're always going to get it. You know I'm I, you know I'm not stupid enough to realise that you know fans will clash all the time. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a Champions League game or any other game. Fans will always clash. There's always going to be them fans who want to get involved in in fighting and things like that, which I've never understood to be honest. I support Newcastle United, um, but I also respect other fans who support their teams. Um, I don't particularly like certain uh, fan bases, but you know what? I, w- I wouldn't go out to cause a fight with anybody because that's just ludicrous. Football is a game at the end of the day, um, and support your teams. It's it was disappointing to see. It really was. Finally, we have some very good news in that uh, Eddie Howe and Kieran Trippier are up for Premier League awards for September. Of course, Eddie Howe is up for Manager of the Month for September, uh, and and what a turnaround it was. You know, considering the start of the season we, we, we had with the defeats and, and then everybody, well, not everybody, but the, the, the bandwagon fans, shall we say, jumping on it and screaming for Eddie House head saying, oh, he's not good enough to take us forward. He's done as much as he can. Uh, he's not a Champions League manager, etc., which is a load of crap. And I think he's proved that over the two Champions League games, to be honest. Um, but Kieran Trippier is in there as well, and rightly so, because, wow, hasn't Kieran Trippier just been absolutely absolutely fantastic uh, over the last month. He's been incredible. Uh, his positional play, his crossing, his deliveries, his defending, uh, just th- the way he conducts himself 100% in everything he does, um, thoroughly deserves this award. He, he's against some good players, to be honest. Um, there is Alvarez of Man City, uh, born at uh, West Ham, who's been playing very well. Uh, Pedro Neto at Wolves as well, so um, well done to him for getting in. Uh, Mo Salah's there, Madison's there, of course, and Hugh Min Son. Um, so he's up against some very, very talented players. Now, if you ask me out of those players, uh, it's probably between Alvarez, Madison, and Trippier for the for the player of the month, if you ask me. Alvarez has been sensational for Man City. Madison has been a breath of fresh air for Tottenham. And, of course, Kieran Trippier has just been sensational for us. So it'll be very close competition. Uh, for the manager, um, well, he's up against the usual suspects, really. Uh, Emery's in there, uh, deservedly so. Uh, Arteta, uh, Jurgen Klopp. Uh, I mean, he, he's on there just for his name. He has to be. Uh, he, I think that's just, after everything that's happened, they thought, oh, we better put him on the nominations for manager of the month. Um, yeah, Liverpool have been all right, but... The disciplinary record stinks, but hey, you know, they're keeping club happy, I guess. Uh, and the other one in there is Ange Postacoglu of uh, of Tottenham. And yes, he deserves to be there. They've had a really good start of the season and uh, playing much, much better football than they have uh, under previous regimes. So it's going to be difficult for both of them to win the, win the prize. But the fact that they're in there and both nominated is absolutely fantastic news for our club yet again. Um, you know, we, we're in for awards now where... A couple of years ago, you wouldn't find a Newcastle player within touching distance of getting any awards. So it's brilliant news again. Uh, but let me know in the comments, do, uh, does Eddie deserve to win it? Does Kieran deserve to win it? For me, Trip, you probably deserve to win it, uh, definitely for the player. But let me know in the comments. But there you go, guys. That is the uh, news for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, as I said at the start, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that thumbs up button for us, uh, if you have enjoyed the show, keep us up there in the search results so that fans like yourselves uh, can find the channel and also if you are new and you like what you see uh, as you can see we're about 102 away from hitting 24,000 subscribers which is is phenomenal Uh, so thank you to everyone that has
has subscribed lately. Uh, and of course, hit that notification bell, which will let you know when we upload videos such as this one or we schedule our live shows. You can, of course, keep voting for us in the Football Content Awards. Uh, the voting is open for another couple of weeks, I do believe. Uh, it is pinned again at the top of the description. Keep going back and voting for us. Clear your cash. Go back in. Let's get the tune review at least into one of the top three. It'll be an incredible achievement given who we are, abs well, who we're up against because there's some big names in there with a lot of subscribers, so we need all the help we can get. And if you want your tune review merchandise, loads on there now, T-shirts, tankards, um, mugs, everything. Uh, go to the tunereview.co.uk. Again, halfway down the description, you'll find the uh, the link to that website. Uh, so go and have a look and see if there's anything you're interested in. But as I said at the start, if you're watching this on Thursday afternoon, tune in tonight for the uh, Newcastle 4 PSG 1 match review. It's going to be a cracker, so we'll see you then. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, folks. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>